Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? It is Winning Cures Everything. That's right. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. It is NFL preview season. That's, I do want to listen to that music real quick. Though. That stuff sounds so good, man. So good. All right. So today we are discussing the AFC East and the NFC East. The show, as always, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. Six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. Do yourself a favor. Go check it out. They've got insanely awesome things going down, down in Tunica. And we're going to be there quite a bit this football season. So go check it out for yourself, tunicatravel.com. You can find more information about us at winningcureseverything.com. You can follow us on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me at Gary WCE. You can follow me at Chris B. Giannini. But you can find our YouTube, our podcasts, etc. If you would, share the show out. Leave some comments on the YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you subscribe on Apple Podcasts. And leave a nice review, a five-star review, if you would so kindly. If you enjoy the show, we would appreciate the support. Chris, are you ready to fire in to the Buffalo Bills? Yes, sir. All right. The Buffalo Bills in the AFC East in 2018, they went seven and nine. They are plus 1,000 to win the division. Their projected strength of schedule this season is 28th in the league. So, fairly easy schedule compared to last season. Their turnover margin last year was 23rd in the league. They were minus five, so not good. You would expect that with a rookie quarterback. Correct. Uh, total yards per play. They were number 31 in the league last year, 4.7. That is not good. Defense, total yards per play, they were number three. They held teams to only 4.9 yards per play. Uh, head coach, Sean McDermott. The offensive coordinator is Brian Dable. And defensive coordinator is Leslie Frazier. The over-under is seven. To go over, it's minus 140. So Vegas thinks fairly highly of this team. To go under is plus 110. What say you? They are uh, they are projected favorites in only four games this year, by the way. So I'm leaning more in the in the way that Vegas is, is leaning here. It shocked me that their over under was so high. Yeah, and that the juice was in favor of Vegas, thinking they're going to more likely go over than under. Um, I got this team as a borderline wild card team. Yeah, I, I got them seven and nine. If they finished eight and eight or nine and seven, it wouldn't surprise me at all. I like oh. Sean McDermott a lot. I think he's the most underrated coach in all of the NFL. Oh, he has completely rebuilt this defense. Nobody talks about him and as one of the best coaches in the NFL, but he's the most consistent. A couple of years ago, he made the playoffs with Tyrod Taylor and ain't much else. Yeah. Um, that roster was pretty depleted, but they fight hard. They play really hard for him. He puts together good game plans. His biggest knock that made him a joke or a laughing stock in the NFL was he tried to force this Nate Peterman thing down people's throat. Yeah. And it just didn't work. Um, I think Josh Allen is a lot better than people thought he was going to be coming out of college. He was a rookie, so they weren't great last year. I'm going to tell you this. I think they added a lot of speed to this team. Oh, they're, here's their wide receiver core. They've got Robert Foster, John Brown, yep. Cole Beasley now. Uh, so they brought in new guys there, and they completely rebuilt the running back core, which is Frank Gore, TJ Yeldon, and they no, drafted Devin Singletary. I was Singletary. just about to say, Devin yeah. Singletary is going to dominate, dominate this year. If, if you're a fancy guy, look, you for him, grab him. look for him in those mid-rounds because he's not going early. You get him cheap. He's going to be a number one uh, uh, running back for this team. I think he's going to get the most carries, the most touches. I mean, he's the most athletic guy. The biggest knock on him coming out of college, if you watched him play college at FIU. FAU. FAU, yeah. sorry. I do that all the time. It happened. He <laughs> he looked really, really good. Yeah. He went into the combine. He ran like a five-something 40. And it was bad, and people think he's slow. I, I can't. He I ain't can't, slow. I can't answer his 40 time. I watched him play with football pads. Well, on he's, he's got carrying a pad. really good vision. Right? He, he sees the field well. He understands where because that's the biggest thing. Like Trent Richardson was really fast. Yeah. But he, was he couldn't big see and he the was field. Fast, he couldn't he, see where yeah. to make the cuts. He couldn't find he, he couldn't follow right blocks. Into a hole. Yeah. yeah. So with uh with Devin Singletary, it's completely different. I, I like him a lot. But I also think TJ Yeldon, 
Good experience guy. Frank yeah, he's Gore, a of course, good locker room guy. Yeah, no, Frank's yeah. A, an unbelievable dude to kind of help teach these guys how to be pros. And uh, I, I like this team. I got them seven and nine. I wanted to have them eight and eight, but I've got them seven and nine. Took as well. a little bit less. Yeah. I wouldn't touch this under over under though. No, not a chance. I wouldn't touch it. Not a chance. Um, they uh, they brought in Ed Oliver on defense. They signed cornerback Kevin Johnson, uh, Jerry Hughes. Another defensive end, he returns. They're still like one edge rusher away from really being a dominant defense. And, but they're building they're the defense. Anyway. In the, they're building the defense from the middle, like edge the way rushers, that you're supposed to. Edge rushers get all the praise. They get all the yeah. glory. They get all the credit, and they get the mega contracts. Okay. Well, they they were like number twenty six in the NFL last year as far as pass rushing. Yes, so, but they were number three overall in defense. Yes. So who gives a crap if you're bad on pass rush? But you stop everything else. Uh, like you don't get a lot of sacks. Guess what? Some of these quarterbacks, if you keep them in the pocket and and you just put a rush on them, they're not great. Yeah. No, you're right. You are correct about anyway, that. Anyway, so I, I like this team a lot more than most people. I, I was surprised that Vegas had them that way. I went into it thinking I'm going to have them eight and eight or nine and seven. I looked through the schedule. It's it, now the the 28th ranked strength of schedule. Like that's fourth softest. That's right. But I just, I can't, I think 7-9. I think 7-9 is good. They've got and, a couple of home games that I think would normally be winnable games, but Philadelphia comes home. I think the Eagles are going to be really good. That's going to be a hard game to win. And 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 when you start chipping away at some of your, your home games, then then I think it's hard to get to 8-8. Eight eight. Yeah. you got to go on the road in the NFL, and it's just not an easy thing to do. I do agree with you. Anyway. Let's move into the Miami Dolphins. Seven and nine last year, division championship odds plus two thousand. Yeah. So basically non existent. Uh, strength of schedule is number twenty this year. Turnover margin last year was number eleven in the league. They were plus three. Pretty good, right? Uh, head coach Brian uh, Brian Flores. He was the New England defensive coordinator, although he didn't have that title necessarily. <laughs> we'll talk more about he that called later. Plays on defense. Yeah. Uh, yards per play, they were number 25 in the league last year at 5.3. Defense, total yards per play, they were number 30 at 6.1. How this team went 7-9 and nine last year, I really have no idea. Um, I mean, they, they're they a protected favorite in only three games. Their over-under is 4.5. To go over is minus 145, which shocks me. And to go under is plus 115. Uh, I mean, you they bring in Ryan Fitzpatrick. They bring in Josh Rosen. To try and shore, they they gave away Ryan Tannehill. Yeah. Um, they're trying to rebuild this new offensive coordinator Chad O'Shea. Uh, he was New England's wide receivers coach. Defensive coordinator Patrick Graham. He was Green Bay's linebacker coach. Uh, they drafted Christian Wilkins on defense. I, you know, it, th- this team. Here's the shocking stat about this team, right? They went seven and one, which is eighty-seven point five percent in one score games last year. 21 teams since 1995 have done that. All went at least 10 and 6. So every win <laughs> that Miami had last year, they went 7 and 9. The right. only team in history to win seven one point games, or not one point, seven one, one score, score games, games, yes. To not win at least 10, they went 7 and 9. Every game they won was by one score. Now, it, it had to do with turnover margin, it had to do with all sorts of stuff. I mean, crazy it, flukiness. I mean, yeah, it's what. How do you feel about? It? Oh, here's the other. Uh, they were, they, they hit ninety percent of their field goals last year, and their opposition uh, hit seventy five percent. That is the. There's no so, way you can analyze that. There's they, no way you hit, can predict that. Yeah, at all. they hit the seventh highest yep. in the league, and their opponents hit the third uh, like worst. Uh, worst. Yeah, and that plus fifteen percent. Field goal edge well, yeah, made up a ton only, of points. When you only win by one score, that's that's amazing. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. And there's no way to predict those types of things, no, right? Like, almost so impossible. So you could take your analysis of a team and just completely throw it away if weird things like that happen. I, I like, felt good about Josh Rosen coming into this situation because I was like, anything has got to be better than Arizona. And then you look at their roster, and it's... Man, like the, the, he played behind a really crap offensive line. And I think the play calling would be better for him. But he's still playing behind an offensive line that is just not built for pass protection. 
I don't know that he is going to play behind this offensive line. No, I think I think Fitzpatrick plays early. I think Fitzpatrick play. I think Fitzpatrick plays the whole time. I, you think I all think, season? Yeah, I think I mean, he's getting on up there, man. It don't matter. He still could put up points. He can still sling that thing. Wait, he can st- I think he'll sling it early. I think he gets hurt. No, the no, he's not getting hurt. It, but he's, behind that offensive line, I he'll think be right. he'll be all right. He's gonna dump the ball off Kenyon Drake and 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 those guys. They'll they'll be fine. I don't I don't like this team. I like them better than Vegas. I think I got them five wins, um, and I'm, a lot of that is I've got I, them three and thirteen. I mean that doesn't surprise me. He, here I, I know I'm out on a limb on some of these. This team actually grades worse than the zero and sixteen Browns team. I know. Oh no, there's no question. That team had talent. That yeah. team had talent. It just had cinder blocks up to their knees in in Hugh Jackson. I mean, you yes. put that kind of stink on a guy, then you can't just get that oh, off. Oh, yeah. No, you're right. So here's my deal. I think Brian Flores is going to be a really good head coach. Yeah. I, I actually think he's going to be not He's not going to be the next Belichick, which everybody's trying to do by hiring his assistants, but I think he runs a professional organization. I don't think in any way, shape, form, or fashion they're going to go in tanking. I think this team is going to play hard. I think he's going to hold people accountable. Like three days into training camp, he fired the offensive line coach. No, you're not cutting it. And I'd rather fire you today <laughs> Once again, what's the rule? As soon as you know you have a losing hand, you fold it. You fold it. If you know this guy's not your guy three days in, hit the bricks, Tommy. It's time to go. I think they're going to play hard. I think they're going to play smart. They're not going to make a lot of dumb mistakes. And uh, I think he's going to make the defense better. I think that's one of the reasons they drafted defense when I I think they probably needed offense and offensive line help. Um, and I think Ryan Fitzpatrick is a good enough quarterback to where there's going to be at least two or three games that he's going to start where he's going to put up 30 points. He's just going to do it. And there's going to be three or four games where he's going to throw more pick sixes than touchdowns. Like, yeah. like that's going to happen. So five, I think, I think if they can win two or three games on their own and Ryan Fitzpatrick just has that Fitz magic game two or three times, I think they get to five wins. It could, it could 100% happen. Okay, so you uh, you like them a little more than I do. A little more than you do. The New England Patriots, eleven and five last year. Your Super Bowl champions to win the division. They are minus four hundred out in Vegas. Their strength of schedule, the softest in the league, number thirty two. Turnover margin last year. They were number five in the league, plus ten. That now Belichick is uh, has always been good at that. Uh, offense, well, you just don't turn the ball over. Yeah. There's not that they're a ball hawking team. Yeah, they just they If just you fumble, you sit down. Yep. And then you never come back. Total yards per play, they were number nine in the league last year at 5.9. Defense, total yards per play, number 16. They gave up 5.7. Uh, no defensive coordinator this year. That is to be determined. Nope. It, well, it, it'll be Belichick. But. Bill, Bill's made it clear. I'm just going to run the defense. Yeah. Uh, Trey Flowers is gone. They drafted Chase Winovich. Uh, Jamie Collins comes back. Uh, offense coordinator Josh McDaniels drafted uh, Nikhil Harry, wide receiver out of Arizona State. Uh, and they got running back Damian Harris, uh, who will be a third. I, I think that the reason I bring him up, I think he fits the offense better than Sony Michelle does. I, but, I do too. But the offense could be completely different this year without Rob Gronkowski. There's no replacing him. So do they run like <laughs> multiple tight ends? Do they? They're going to run, they're going to run multiple tight ends. And they're going to run the ball, and their receivers, they're going to have two running backs on the field at all times. I, I don't i don't know what this offense is going to look like. I know this. They got more running backs in the league than anybody in the on the team than anybody in the league. Yeah. Yeah. They got no receivers at all. Nikhil Harry is instantly the number one wide out because Edelman's going to play in the slot. Yeah. And and I don't think uh, uh, Dorsett is going to, you know, I, I think no. I think Harry's going to overtake him now. He hasn't. He hadn't first, played yet. first, we need to preface all of this because this is the first video we're doing. We're recording this August, August 11th. 11th yeah. All right. If somebody gets hurt between now and the time the season starts, you lose a quarterback, something, Drew Brees goes down. Like what we think of a team completely oh, changes. Oh, yeah, completely changes. So, but right now, Nikhil Harry hadn't had a good camp. But in the first preseason game, he comes out, he goes up, he makes a big play on the ball. And the guy's got play. talent. I think before the end of camp is over, he's going to be the best receiver. He's going to be one of the most physical, dominant guys. But nobody's replacing Gronk. Yeah. Nobody. It's, it's almost impossible. 
Um, let me tell you a little story about how Bill Belichick is the master of the salary cap. Oh, right. yeah. Left tackle Trent Brown brought him in last year. He was traded to New England for a third-round pick. Uh, it was a cap hit of only $1.9 million. This offseason, he signed with Oakland for $66 million. And the Pats get a, a comp Come pick see. Yep. because of that. So they get him to come in and win a Super Bowl. And now, of course, they've got Isaiah Wynn, who will be back this year. So they have got the the cheapest offensive line in the league, but it's because all of them still have three, four years left on their deal. They are building it through the draft and everything. And, and this team, this organization, understands how to – how to play the game, how to build a team with the salary cap. And it is insane. So what uh what are you looking up here? Uh the most valuable player, person, individual in all of the NFL is is not Bill Belichick. Because Bill Belichick makes a lot of money. Well yeah. It's it's Dante Scarnecchia. I'm trying to find what Dante Scarnecchia makes in the salary, is what I'm trying to look up. I get his net worth, but that doesn't help me any. And I can't find his salary. Um, but he's the offensive line offensive coach, line coach. Yeah. And, and he takes no name guys, undrafted dudes all the time, turns them in when they become free agents into the highest paid players in the NFL and the Patriots say, bye. And, and guess what? Those great offensive linemen that leave the Patriots and take that payday, never make another pro bowl again. They're never a great again because they truly are a hand in the way yeah. they work. They are five individuals working together for one force. And when one of them does something different, outstanding, unique, and leaves on his own, he's worthless. Not, yeah. not that he's worthless, but compared to what he's valued well, he's, at. He's not worthless. He's just yeah. worth less than he was That's right. with the Pats. And, and then, so this is how he's a, he just does matrix things with the salary cap. I don't understand how some of these things work. Tom Brady got a new extension to your yeah. deal. Somehow his cap hit for this year went down $5 million, but his salary went up $8 million. I don't pretend to be a cap expert in the league. I don't know how that works. This year, Tom Brady's going to make $8 million more than he was set to make, but he's going to cost the cap $5 million less this year. That math doesn't make sense to my brain. I don't understand yeah, the rules I don't, I don't get or that how either. that works, but I'll tell you this. That $5 million, that's his wheelhouse. If you look at Van Noy and, and all of the types of guys like that, these, these mid-level veterans that Bill brings in, they all make four to $5 million. Bill said, do this deal. We're going to give you an $8 million bump. You're going to save us $5 million. I'm going to turn that $5 million die into some dude that nobody's ever heard of before. He's going to help us win a Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the wheelhouse that he is. I don't know how that stuff works. Yeah. I've got them 12 and 4 this year. They're a projected favorite in 13 games. I got them 12 and 4 also. And let me tell you the games I have them losing. Cuz I'm going to specifically tell you, A, they're not going to lose a home game. Look at their home schedule. Well, yeah, they're not. It's brutal. Yeah. It's brutal. They got they got Philly at home, they got they, Cleveland they don't at lose home. At no, home. they don't. I think they go to Philly. They've got Cleveland at home, they got Pittsburgh at home, they got Kansas City at home. They don't lose home games and they don't lose to big teams. You know who he's going to lose to? He's going to lose that second game of the season to Miami because they're going to go down the 120-degree heat and they're not going to play well. And Brian Flores is going to get him. They're going to lose a game at the Jets probably because it's just something that they do. They're going to lose a game at Philly, and they're probably going to lose at Houston. Okay. He's going to lose to one playoff team. Yeah, that sounds better. And then they're going to win the Super Bowl. Because <laughs> that's what he does, right? I mean, that's what he does. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're anyway, right. All right. All right. Let's move on to the Jets. <laughs> Four and twelve last year to win the division championship plus five hundred. So they got the second best odds. Uh, strength of schedule number thirty one. That is the second softest behind the Patriots. Turnover margin twenty seventh in the league last year. They were minus ten, kind of to be expected with That's their right. rookie quarterback. Uh, head coach is Adam Gase now, former Miami coach. Uh, they're over under is seven. So over is minus 150. The juice on the under plus 120. They expect them to, to go over seven as opposed to under it. Uh, offense, total yards per play last year, number 29 in the league at 4.9 yards per play. 
Defense, total yards per play number 21. They gave up 5.7 yards per play. That's a minus 0.8 difference. Not good. But they bring in uh, Dewell Loggins, Miami offensive coordinator from last year. And they bring in defensive coordinator Greg Williams, who did some good things in Cleveland. Uh, they drafted defensive tackle Keenan Williams. They Now, as far as offense goes, they brought in Jamison Crowder. Uh, wide receiver, and they brought in Le'Veon Bell. I was about to say, that, that's not what they brought in. No, they brought in Le'Veon Bell. They brought uh, Le'Veon in Le'Veon Bell. Bell. Uh, Donald, who, who Adam Gates was pissed about and got the the uh, the general manager fired for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, former OC Jeremy Bates, his sporadic play calling definitely hindered the development of Sam Darnold early. They changed things up a little bit. Darnold actually led the NFL in QBR in December last year. Did you know that? Yeah, it was, it was safe. Passes. Yeah. They ran the ball a lot more, and and they threw a lot short, easy passes. Get his completion rate up. Let guys be athletes in the open field. It was yeah. smart. It's what um, you need to do with a rookie quarterback. They the so I said they drafted defensive tackle uh, Kenny Williams. They signed C.J. Mosley, linebacker from Baltimore. Defensive tackle Leonard Williams and uh, safety Jamal Adams are the the force of the defense, the okay. rock of the defense. They lead one of the league's most talented defenses. I was Greg Williams to say. has a ton to work with. Yes. Uh, they're projected favorites in only four games this year. Um, the first seven weeks are brutal, but, I mean, it's the second easiest schedule in the NFL. Uh, I'm going to tell you, I've got them eight and eight this year. Whoa! I like Sam Darnold. I think that he's going to – I think that Adam Gase can really work with him uh, so long as he can stay healthy because it, I liked Ryan Tannehill when he was healthy, when he was on the field. What Gase was doing with him in Miami – like, Gase always overachieved what I thought Miami was going to be. And now he's just got significantly more talent and a better defensive coordinator. So, I like them at 8-8. Eight and eight. Uh, If they go 7-9, and 9-7, nine, nine and seven, either one wouldn't surprise me. Um, but I, I don't so see... This is our first big difference. Okay. Big, big difference. I got them 4-12. and 12. And, and I'm going to tell you why. I... I don't like what Adam Gase. I think Adam Gase got lucky. We just talked about yeah. We Miami, just talked about Miami being like super having lucky. so many weird fluky things happen to get them to seven wins. I like this defense. I think Greg Williams will be fine. But but I but I also think I also think this offense is going to struggle. I I don't know that when you don't have strong leadership in your locker room, bringing Le'Veon Bell into that locker room is not always the fix. Yeah, The coach openly having problems with them spending the amount of money they spent on Le'Veon. On Le'Veon Bell. Is, and, and everybody in the league knows that. I don't know that that's going to help make things go very smooth and kosher. I think chaos for young quarterbacks is always scary. Yeah, it it just something I don't like. I don't like it in college. I don't like it in the NFL. When you're inexperienced at a level and there's constant churn and constant turnover, I it just scares me. I do think this defense has talent. I think Cleveland had a lot of talent on defense and they still went 0 and 16. Yep. I, I bad offenses and turmoil in locker rooms kind of conquer everything. Okay. So you've got them four and twelve. I got them four and twelve. We're we're big different. On yeah, that. we're way off on that one. Now, I'm, I'm, eight I'm gonna pre- I'm gonna preface this by saying this is the NFL. Everybody that I have 12, 13 wins, if they finish nine and seven, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Everybody that I have two to four wins, if they finish seven and nine, it wouldn't surprise me. This is this is a league in which it's set up for everybody to go eight and eight. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. No, not everybody will. Of course, oh, no, but, it's not going to happen, but, but, that's, but that's the, the way, way it's set up. Yes. You ready to move to the NFC? Come on.